Today, we're going to talk about guest bedrooms. How do we decorate a guest bedroom as opposed to a primary bedroom? This is part of a series of a lake house build and design. We have one big project that we've been working on and that is a lake house. This is one that we decided to build because our older lake house was actually going to slide into the water and we figured it wouldn't be a good thing if we were in it when that happened. So we ended up tearing it down. We took all the furniture out of it, decided to build a new lake house and pull most of that old furniture back in, but also try to make the house look a little bit fresh. So I'm gonna show you how we did the guest bedroom bedrooms. Welcome back to the Kojo channel. As you know, we have a process for decorating. If you have not seen our video on that process, check this link right here. We are going to follow that process in every single room. A lot of what we're using in these rooms are old, collected, secondhand and inherited items. There are some little new things splashed here and there, but it's had to work on a very tight budget. But let's start with number one on our process list. Choose the purpose of your room. How are you going to use this room? Is it going to be a home office as well as a guest room? Are you going to have children coming home from school for the summer and on holidays? Are you going to have family coming in? Are you going to have elderly family members coming in? Are you going to use it as a workout room, a sewing room? What are you going to use this room for? You could have multiple uses for a room. I even thought I might be working in one of the rooms at the lake, so I was considering bunk beds, so I could put a computer desk in there. I was considering a Murphy bed. I looked into a lot of options. Finally, I decided I was just going to use them as guest rooms. Then I moved my computer desks into another area. But you need to make sure that you cover all the options of use for this one bedroom. Second, choose the overall look of the room. You need to really get a good idea of what you want an overall look for that room to be. Keep a general idea in your head of what it is you like. That may sound like a pretty easy thing to do, but you really need to go to Pinterest, to magazines, rip out pages or select boards just because of the overall look, feeling, vibe, color scheme, anything that you like about that room. Save that because that is really what's gonna send you in the right direction. Don't worry about execution at this point. Just pull something because you like it. Execution will come later. In the case of these two guest bedrooms, the rooms are very close together. You can see both of the rooms from every one. angle. Guest bedroom number two. I needed them to look similar. I had to keep that in mind. So you will see some very repetitive choices that I make in both rooms because of that. I didn't want them to be fighting each other and I didn't want them to be so busy that when you walked into the room, it was slightly confusing. I wanted to make sure that the looks were cohesive and make sure that the overall look was very comforting, very welcoming, and very warm. For me, it was our love of all things sailboat. So I knew that I was going to be concentrating on artwork in both of those rooms that reflected our love for sailing, for ships, for anything that had to do with boats. I chose paint by numbers to go in one bedroom, and I chose more 70s style oil paintings to go in the other room. But be very careful of not getting too themey. We don't want sailboat light switch plates. We don't want actual sailboats all over the room, rope everywhere and netting. This isn't a stage set, it's a bedroom. We want to lean in those directions, but we don't want to totally fall in the bucket. You may have something else that you want to reflect. It could be a color. You may really, really love green and want to use varying shades of green and not too much else in the room. You decide what you want that to be. Next, choose your fabrics. You can do that by looking at Pinterest, in magazines, and also by walking around a fabric store. But since you have your overall look, you are already deciding what colorway you want to go through and deciding whether you want solids, stripes, checks, florals. Maybe you just want some texture and you want all solids. Whatever it is, you've decided by choosing the overall look of your room. I chose to go with blue bedspreads in one room because my paint by numbers have primarily blue backgrounds. I chose green for the other room because the orange and green and brown 70s colors and the oil paintings looked better with the drab green that I chose for that room. I chose the same bedspread. They both came from Ballard Designs. I wanted to make sure that they had a very unifying look and from both angles looking into the rooms, they weren't fighting each other. I also chose headboards that were identical except for color. One was white, one was brown. They were very simple. 
I wanted to look in the rooms and really just see the artwork. Everything to me was about the artwork. In addition to thinking about the colors on the bed, you have to think about your draperies. I had some draperies from the old house that I decided to use. They also came from Ballard Designs. They were made out of burlap and I had rope ties, which looked very boaty and I use cleats, actual cleats that you use on a dock. I use those as my tie back holders. Everything else in the room, very, very simple, but I did want to use my curtains again because of my budget. So I used that in one room. And then one day I was at Goodwill, found some curtains for $20 and decided I had to have those. So I brought those home. They matched my bedspread and then moved all the burlap into one room and use the ties in there. So you're gonna change your mind. You can change your mind. I changed mine because I found a great deal, but still I put solid colors up on the walls, solid colors on my bed, and decided that most of my pattern was going to be in my pillows. Okay, I'm gonna admit it. I'm a pillow girl from way back. I love pillows. I love to change out my pillows. To do this inexpensively, I would say get on Amazon, buy some pillow covers, get on Etsy, pick out some pillow covers, choose exactly what you want, then use your current pillows as fillers in these new covers. That's a great way to save money. Just make sure that your inserts are two inches larger than the covers. You want them to look big and fluffy and substantial when you put them out but that is a really inexpensive way to make a change in a room. And with all the solid colors that I put in these two bedrooms, I needed some cute pillows. So one room ended up with some pillows that I had bought years ago at TJ Maxx, and the other were two little bitty kidney pillows that I had made. I did not have them made for this bedroom. I originally was going to use them in my downstairs great room area because that was the color I was going to use as an accent. I changed my mind. You can change your mind. So there I was with these two pillows and all of a sudden they looked so cute with this blue bedspread with my red and white quilts and my paint by number paintings. It just looked great and it was a happy mistake, but sometimes happy mistakes happen when you're decorating. Yay! So I didn't have to throw anything away. I just used it in another area. I have always thought that fabrics bring so much to a room. Whenever I'm looking in magazines or online and I see a beautiful room, I find that it's usually beautiful because of the fabrics that were chosen. A room that exudes quality and warmth is one that very smartly uses a combination of patterns or textures or colors in different fabrics. A room that really looks decorated is a room that takes it to the next level with custom slip covers, custom pillows, special edgings on curtains that match the pillows on the sofas. That's really where a room starts to take on its individuality. So remember that when you're choosing your fabrics, that is a way to really make it your room, yours and not a magazine's room or somebody else's room, just yours, very individual. Next in our process list, choosing hard services, choosing your tile, countertops, choosing flooring. In a bedroom, obviously I'm not choosing countertops or tile, but flooring could be something that you have to choose. For me, the flooring was the same throughout the house. Once I chose it for the main areas, I had to live with it in the bedrooms and in the bathrooms. Sometimes in bedrooms you have carpeting. Adding carpeting could add a lot of warmth to a room. Not having a solid wood floor provides you with an opportunity to have more furniture in that room so you can have the warmth of the wood tones. If you're going to use a rug, and I used rugs, I used a large rug from the old house, then I used two rugs in the other room that actually I'd purchased to use on the landings in my foyer and they didn't work out, but they looked so good with the blue bedspread that I put them together and put them under the bed. Another happy mistake. So you will just walk your way through that, decide if you want the warmth of rugs or carpeting, if you want just a hardwood floor. Those are the decisions you have to make before you get to the next step, choosing your paint. I love choosing paint. It's my favorite part of the process. Why? Because it's so flexible. You can take any of the elements you've chosen in the previous steps, take those with you to a paint store and they will custom match it. If you find that fabric that you absolutely adore, you take that fabric with you and you match the color out of that fabric that you want on the wall. It's so easy. 
Make sure you have your color deck with you whenever you're walking around and shopping for tile and shopping for fabric to make sure you're staying in the right colorway because it is difficult sometimes to match exactly without having all of the elements in front of you. That's probably going to be the easiest thing you choose for this room. Then you have to decide what sheen you want. Do you want a gloss? Do you want a matte? semi-gloss, decide what you want. You can use the same color, but have different sheens to give it a little bit of dimension, but not add too much color. In my house, I decided to use paint on the ceiling and the walls that was the same color. I then used the same color on the baseboard. The baseboards though had a little bit more sheen. That actually helped me in such a small room to make the room feel a little bit bigger and less chopped up. If you are working with a large room and it's a more traditional room, then you may want to use crown moldings and show the difference between the moldings and the wall, showcase that molding. But it does depend on A, your style, and B, on the size of your room. If you have a very small room, you do have to be careful with chopping your room up too much. It can be done, but make sure you try to unify it either through color, through sheens, or even through types of moldings. Using moldings is a way to make a room feel special. I love moldings. I think they're gorgeous, but they belong in a certain style of home. Now in a small non-traditional space like mine, I felt that adding moldings was going to make the rooms too fussy. Whether you choose moldings or not, whichever decision you make, make sure to go all in. You can't go halfway. Choosing your wood tones. I would say that times have changed quite a bit and you're not expected to do nothing but mahogany in a room. People like to see that eclectic, slowly added on through time look where you have some painted furniture and some other finishes. I think that looks fantastic. Will you have painted furniture? Will you have oak furniture? Mahogany, are you going to have some sort of mixture of all of the above? If you're like me, you're gonna have to mix some things together because it's what you have. It's okay. I tried very hard to divide the wood types between the two rooms. I have white furniture in one room with a white headboard. I have wood furniture in the other room. They are not all the exact same type, but they are tonally pretty close together. That was really how I unified everything by keeping it simple and giving sort of a nice, safe palette to work with. And the final step in this process, you have to ask yourself, are there any existing pieces that I have to work with? For me, the answer is yes, yes, yes. I have items that I have inherited. I have items that I have purchased at garage sales. I have items that I have purchased at secondhand shops. I have items that I purchased and regretted, and now I have to live with them. We all have these things. The question is, how do we use them in our spaces? At my age, I don't wanna keep buying new furniture. I wanna make what I have look the best it can look. Maybe you have a piece of furniture that you think is not that pretty. Maybe you can paint it a certain color, bring it into the room, and it'll blend in maybe with the wall or with the fabric, saving a little bit of money. A lot of people are painting furniture right now and giving it a second life. So consider that when you're going through all of your old stuff. One way to unify some of these mismatched pieces is through color. You'll see in a later episode, in the great room, I took a lot of upholstered pieces and upholstered them all in the same color. I actually bought a set of club chairs from a friend. I had a sofa that was very old, unified all of it with one type of fabric. In the bedrooms, what I used was types of items, unifying with the same bedspread, unifying with the same headboard. I had so many different items in there, so many elements that I really needed to make sure I was unifying in some way all of these things that I've collected over the past 40 years. As I've mentioned, I have a lot of happy mistakes that I've made in this house. Yay! The main thing to remember is don't beat yourself up over these mistakes. Just step back, look at them and say, okay, how can I make this work? How can I use this? If you can't use a pillow that you bought, just do like me, put it in a trash bag, keep it in a corner in your basement, and I promise you, you'll pull it out later and use it in another room. It's amazing to me that once we start buying and working on a project, we do normally stay in the lane that we have chosen for ourselves. And when we do that, we can always be assured that what we buy will be usable in another project or in another part of the house because it was your taste and you bought it. And if you bought it and you said, ooh, that was a big mistake, 
just consider doing something with it, maybe changing it, painting it. Think about different ways to use it. I promise you, you will be able to use it. Now, if you have the opportunity to buy all new furniture, first of all, I'm a little jealous. Second of all, keep in mind scale. Size and scale are a little bit different. Make sure you're thinking about things like the backs of a chair, a club chair, the backs of a sofa. How high is your headboard? Do you want it low? Do you want it high? If you're leaning back, what do you want your head to hit? You have to think about those things. How tall are your side tables on either side of your bed? Are they tall enough to reach and put a glass or a book on? Does it need to be higher? Does it need to be lower? Do you have any physical constraints that mean that you need a lower bed instead of a very high bed? Think about those things. The size of the furniture is really very important when you're decorating a room. Sometimes we tend to buy furniture that is too big. Make sure that you are really considering the scale, that you can walk around the furniture easily, and that when you sit in it, it is truly comfortable. I've seen so many cute chairs in stores lately. When I sit in them though, my head does not go back against the back of the chair. There are a lot of barrel type chairs out there that when you look at them, it looks like they would be comfortable to sit in but sometimes they wouldn't be. Remember, if you are choosing a chair for your bedroom, you can get one that's a little bit less comfortable than one you would use, say, in your great room. Mostly people use those chairs in bedrooms for sitting down, putting on shoes, or reading a book, or to throw a jacket on. So you can use a smaller chair to put in a corner, especially in a guest room. So now you've chosen everything for your guest room. You're starting to move everything in there and you need to make some last minute changes, finishing touches. Here are some things to consider. One, laundry baskets. Always have a hamper of some sort in the guest closet or sitting in the corner of the room so people know where to put their bath towels. Number two, extra sheets, extra pillows, towels, washcloths. Keep those in the closet. Also, have a trash can in there and have some tissue. Possibly a small fan. Some people really need a fan right next to them on a bedside table. Have a place for people to put their luggage. If you have older guests, they will not want to lean over on the floor and pick things out of their suitcase. You will need a bench of some sort or a luggage rack that folds and goes back in the closet after they leave. But make sure you have a place for them to put their bags or their luggage. Two other things, have a mirror in the room and have a place for people to sit down and put on shoes. If you don't have room for a chair, consider a small bench or make sure the bed is low enough to where someone can sit down and put shoes on. You always have to think about your older guests. Things like that really make a difference when you're older. A couple of things to remember. Everything can't be the thing in a room. You can't have sailboat pictures and some bright colors or lots of ruffles or florals. You really have to choose the one thing that you want to showcase in a room. For me, it was the artwork. And it's not expensive artwork. It was just something I wanted to showcase. So you decide what that is. It may be a lovely bedspread with pillows and the bed could be the thing. But if it is, that needs to be the only thing. That means your walls, your furniture, everything else needs to be secondary to this one thing that you want to showcase. If there are a couple of ideas that you have and you think they're awesome, save one of those ideas for another room. Do not put them in the same room. And lastly, be prepared to change your mind. I can change your mind. You may change your mind over and over and over again. I know I did. What style did I want in that room? Oh, it'd be great if it was modern. No, it'd be great if it was kind of a campy look because it's going to be at the lake. No, it'd be great if it was just this high-end look that was so comfortable. I went all over the board, all over the board. You will change your mind. But as you start to make decisions, as you start to invest in certain pieces, those choices will keep you honest. But until you do make that first purchase, you will change your mind over and over and over again because the possibilities are endless. I hope seeing this process helps you think about how you're going to decorate your next room. We are going to use this same process again and again. Next, we're using it on a foyer and a small seating room. That small seating room, there's no such thing as a seating room. It's a sitting room. I used the wrong <laughs> one. Okay. We are going to decorate a foyer and a small sitting room. 